just to kind of make the point, there's a few obvious things about this. If we do that same idea on this particular example and we bring those lines across in our set contour, very quickly you realize that the spacing of the contours is actually quite telling. That the closer they are together, the tight ones, that's showing the steep space. And the ones that are farther apart from each other, that's talking about the lower slope. So this is very fast, like in 2Ds, you can actually understand three-dimensional space really shockingly well. It's amazing how fast you can understand 3D in 2D using this simple system. One other quick thing to say about it, the contours are just a useful way of understanding the lay of the land. They are not meaningful other than that. There is nothing sacred when you see a contour line it doesn't exist in the world. It's a made up concept. It's an abstract idea. You'll find people often start lining up sidewalks with contours or putting the building against the contour line because it just seems like it's a line. It should be meaningful. It's meaningful in terms of the lay of the land, in terms of the shape of the land, but it's not meaningful for any other reason. If you imagine that, let's say, due to global warming, the average high water mark changed by four inches. And so we recalculated all the contours, everything would shift four inches. It would still be meaningful to the lay of the land, but all the contours would be different. So it's an abstract way of thinking about these things. So when you're thinking about this and you're trying to figure out, well, how far apart should these things be in terms of those numbers that I was just talking about, you can, while you're working on the program, you can use circles. Let's say we're trying to make sure that something is not steeper than 20% slope. If I use a circle that represents 20 over 100, which would be 1 over 5, so I use a 5-foot circle, that 5-foot circle will give me a sense that these things are either too close or too far apart. I can tell very quickly and easily, and I can move circles and make circles very simply and easily. That's one of the things you'll often use on this as a measuring tool. All right, so that's pretty fast, but I think gives you kind of a sense of what's expected of you. As I said, it's really about controlling how the water moves across the site without trying to dramatically change the overall pattern of how the water moves. If the water is moving from left to right and there's something in the middle you're trying to protect, you're not going to be able to get the water to move from right to left. It's too hard. You're going against nature. It's not reasonable. So you're always working with the issue at hand, working with the way the water is trying to flow on the site and just trying to get it to not do the damaging things and go around. Don't be worried about being dramatic. Those pointy swales are okay. The biggest worry you have to have is that there are limitations on what the slopes can be and you can't let the contours get too close to each other or too far apart from each other. Then you'll be with the wrong slope. Blackspectacles.com is the home of online learning for architecture and design. You can go to blackspectacles.com, kind of get a taste of this online ARE prep curriculum we built with AI Chicago and Mike, covering all seven sections of the exam. And there are free tutorials in every one of those courses. As a part of today's session, you're eligible for coupon codes for your ARE membership. 15% off the monthly membership and 30% off an annual membership all through the end of the month. And we're doing group memberships. So if you want to get one for your firm or if you want your firm to buy one for you, you can go to blackspectacles.com slash business or just email me. We're running a promotion again where business memberships are 15% off as well. Our next webinar is going to be different. What we're going to do is we're going to sort of have a no holds barred Q&A session with Mike. It's not specific to an exam. Whatever exam you're working on, you have a question, you've tried to solve a vignette and you don't like your answer, you're unsure about your answer, put it in a PDF and email it to me. And what we'll do is we're just going to take them first come first serve and everyone who submits them will take an hour and Mike will answer them one after the other. So it'll be a cool event because if you actually have a question, you can get a real answer. And if you just want to see what other people are kind of wrestling with, it'd be a great way to learn from other people's questions and problems and so on. And that's going to be on April 22nd.